Hello and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. I'm Sarah and today I have some exciting news. Uh, at least I hope you will think it's exciting too. I'm very excited to announce that I have a new pattern uh, available and this is the pattern for the Bethel socks. Um, so if you have been hanging out for a while either here on YouTube or over on our Instagram feed um, you'll know that I have released a couple of other patterns uh, named after the town of Bethel. And I've previously released uh, a hat, which I'm wearing, as well as a set of matching mitts. And I enjoyed this stitch pattern so much um, that I decided to convert it to uh, work with a pair of socks. So for that gauge and for that size of item. Um, and. I'm knitting this out of a very special yarn. Um, this yarn is from Wing and a Prayer Farm down in Shaftesbury, Vermont. Uh, my friend Tammy White is the proprietor there, shepherd, uh, fiber farmer, and she makes a very special yarn specifically for socks. And when I found out about this yarn, I immediately wanted to start designing with it. Um, I hadn't seen other patterns um, designed specifically for her yarn and um, so I wanted to make sure that there were some some patterns that were specifically designed for that. Um, so earlier th this year I put together the Shaftesbury socks um, which used a slip stitch pattern and those were released um, on Ravelry. They're also available right now. They were also released as a knitting kit and I'll tell you about that in just a second. Um, and that seemed to be pretty well received. I know some of you um, have bought the the kits and the pattern and ha have already made your Shaftesbury socks um, and for that we're both very grateful um, but I wanted to follow that up with another design um, like I said based on this texture on this hat and you can see it's it sort of looks like broken rib but it's a little bit um, different from your standard broken rib pattern um, but it's still a very simple knit pearl uh, repeat it's easily memorizable and I think it's um, one of those patterns that turns into, you know, something that gets you motivated to just, oh, I'll just knit the next row or two um, just to get to the next part of the repeat. And then before you know it, you keep doing that and you've got a finished item. Um, so I know I appreciate that in my knitting and I try to design that way for other people too. Um, so uh, back to the yarn for a second. Um, I happen to have a skein of... Tammy's sock yarn um, right here and this is it. Now my skein has a lot of variation and variegation in it um, but some of her skeins are much more solid so you'll be able to choose um, the colorway that you like best that suits you the best. Um, I think she even has a small amount of undyed yarn. Um, all of her yarns are made from fibers sourced on her farm um, with different blends. Um, she has many different kinds of fiber animals. And um, Tammy does a really good job of working with the fibers that she has and the kind of design specs from the mill to come up with some great yarns um, that have good characteristics for um, the kinds of garments that they're intended to, to be used to make. Um, so for example, she has some um, shawl, uh, shawl ready yarns or sweater ready yarns that have mohair in them and you know they have a lot of beautiful drape and sheen um, and they're really nice for those kinds of garments. Um, in particular this Vermont sock yarn is made from the fleece of Dorset sheep um, and it's 90% Dorset and then it's 10% uh, nylon for strength. And the Dorset breed of sheep are known for their um, they're a down breed and so they have a, a kind of a spongy, almost like a memory foam type of fleece. Um, if you look at the entire fleece or if you're petting a dorset sheep, you'll notice it has that memory foam kind of a feeling. Um, it's very bouncy and when you push your hand into the fleece, the, the fibers kind of compress and you'll leave a handprint and then as soon as you take your hand away, it'll kind of expand and go back to the way it was. So that's, that's kind of what I mean when I say memory foam. Um, the other thing about the Dorset sheep, though, that makes it um, extra nice for socks is that it does not uh, readily felt. Um, in fact, I have a friend who knit herself a, an item, I think it was a, a bag, 
and she out of dorset yarn that she had hand spun and then she was trying to get it to felt and she was having a devil of a time doing it um, so in terms of socks, um, that's really great because, of course, you have all this wear and tear inside of your shoe, uh, lots of friction, um, either from walking barefoot on floors or walking around with your with your foot inside your shoe, creating all that friction. And so the dorset really resists all that all of that friction, um, and it does not readily um, felt or shrink or do any of those things. Um, now, of course, with the added 10% nylon, you're going to get even more, just that little um, extra bit of strength as well um, to have a nice, long-lasting uh, pair of socks. So I can really recommend this yarn, um, and I can recommend it on a couple of levels. One is it's really nice and soft and squishy um, to work with. It's very pleasant and bouncy. Like I said, it's got that memory foam kind of squishiness and bounce to it. Um, I always wish we had, like, squish a vision here. Uh, <laughs> but you can see it's nice and bouncy. Um, the other thing that it, it has is this incredible durability. And we really put that to the test. Um, this, this yarn is not super wash treated, um, which is the chemical process that some sock yarn is um, put through in order to make it more machine washable. Um, so this yarn is untreated, but I have a swatch here, that was a test swatch, just to, to for my own edification, to see what the durability was and to see how this would wash. Um, and what we did with this swatch was we had it on top of our washing machine for a couple of weeks, and every time we do a load of laundry, we throw this in. And I just wanted to wash it over and over and over again and see what would happen. Um, and then at some point, the swatch accidentally made it into the dryer and got put on high heat uh, you know, a regular drying load. And even with the dryer, now I'm not going to recommend putting your socks, your hand knit socks in the dryer, but this held up incredibly well. Um, it did shrink just a tiny bit. And I don't know if you can see maybe on the back that it is starting to be full just a little bit. So it's almost like thinking about felting, um, but it's not actually felted. You can actually still see all of the individual stitches uh, on this piece of fabric. So I'm very impressed with this. Um, it also still feels very durable. There's absolutely no pills or anything on this from being washed multiple times and handled quite a bit. Um, so this is a really great yarn um, for knitting your socks or for knitting other durable garments. Um, you know, I like to, um, sometimes I pick superwash yarn uh, for baby items because um, personally I don't like to knit with acrylics or, or cottons very much but I also don't want to give a new parent um, the added uh, uh, you know weight of having to deal with a hand wash item especially one for a baby that's going to get dirty um, and so I'll choose I'll often choose uh, commercial yarns that have been superwash treated for baby items but I really feel like this Vermont sock yarn could take the place of some of those things um, if you wanted to make you know, bibs or baby clothes, sweaters, um, maybe even a nice little baby blanket. Um, that would be, you know, really, really suitable for that kind of a project. Um, so in addition to kind of telling you about this pattern, I'm obviously giving you a, a review of this um, because I wasn't 100% certain um, how this would compare to, you know, a regular commercial yarn. Here's a commercial yarn that I've used in the past. And you can see that they definitely look different. The commercial yarn is spun just a little bit more evenly, and um, it's spun uh, at a little bit finer gauge. Um, but that said, I've actually used this particular yarn before, and it, it, it doesn't, I would say it doesn't wear as well as um, Tammy's Vermont Sock Yarn. So um, even though this is specialty and it's, and it's a homegrown version, um, it, it is really an excellent and very durable yarn. So I highly recommend it. Um, in terms of the pattern, like I said, it's a, it's a pretty versatile pattern. It's a very simple um, pa uh, pattern, just knit and purl stitches. Um, and I've written everything out. I used a, a German um, short row heel, a garter stitch heel for it, which I think is probably one of the easiest heels to learn if you've never knit socks before and I include some video tutorials on how to do that heel. 
Um, and you can also substitute. I help you in the pattern. If you have a preferred uh, way to do the heels on your socks, I give you suggestions on when to start and end your heel within the pattern. So if you are not a novice sock knitter and you have a preferred method, you can um, substitute that in pretty easily. I've also given a range of sizes. I only do um, adult sizes in my current sock patterns, but I give a range from a women's uh, shoe size 7 US up to a men's 12 or 13. So hopefully um, you can find the size range that you need for to fit your feet, um, or you could easily adapt it uh, to, to do that. Um, what else do I want to say about the pattern? Yeah, it's pretty straightforward, and I feel like you could whip up a, a pair of socks within, you know, a, a week or so um, if you worked on them a little bit every day. Um, these are knit. This is um, considered a fingering weight yarn, but it's a pretty heavy fingering weight, and so I suggest that you knit them on size twos, whereas I was normally um, recommend a size US one um, for a nice tight fabric for socks. Um, it'll wear better. Um, in this case, you want to use a size 2 or even a size 3, perhaps, um, depending on your preference, just to let the, the bounce of this um, yarn expand fully and really take advantage of the, the cushiony feel of this yarn on your foot. So knitting them on a larger needle, obviously, will also make them uh, go further. Um, the, the other uh, suggestion that I do have, and I, I mentioned this in the pattern too, is these skeins are just under 400 yards and so if you are knitting at the largest sizes you might need a little bit of extra yarn um, what you can do is take some leftovers from another pair of socks um, I typically have quite a bit of yarn left over when I make my socks for myself so just find um, some leftovers in your stash that will coordinate with your skein and you can uh, knit the toes and heels out of that and then um, use this to showcase the pattern so that will help you get a full pair, even for you know uh, one of the larger sizes, out of a single skein of this sock yarn. Um, I hope you enjoy the Bethel sock pattern. I had a lot of fun designing it, and um, I'm really glad that it's out in the world. Um, Tammy uh, of Wing and a Prayer Farm will be at um, the New York Sheep and Wool Festival this year at Rhinebeck, and she will have both the Shaftesbury sock knitting kits um, which is kind of a, a, a take-home pedicure kit. Um, she'll have those as well as um, just single individual skeins of the sock yarn. And so you can download either pattern, either the Shaftesbury or the Bethel socks, um, and grab one of her skeins and knit those. And if you do, I hope you'll tag both of us on social media so we can see your progress. Um, you can use the hashtag Bethel socks or hashtag chef's berry socks, um, tag Gage Hillcrafts, and tag Wing and a Prayer Farm so we can cheer you on and check on your progress. Um, thanks again for joining me and tune in again. I might even do another bonus video this week. Um, I'm trying to get several patterns out that I'm really excited about for fall and um, so those will be my next couple of videos. I'll be sharing some more patterns with you. Thanks a lot. Happy knitting.